Albert Berry experience of almost 46 years, where first of all, I have served with Indian Army for 30 years, took part in many operations like Indian peacekeeping force at Sri Lanka and then Operation Cargill. After that, when I hang my uniform, I joined a, a major hydro power project company where I was a general manager for a hydro power project. After that, I joined a consulting company, Australian consulting company and served for six years. After leaving that job, I think I have decided to join the education sector and I joined Sri Ram Sarup Memorial University, which I am still continuing. This 46 years of service has given me ample opportunity to interact with troops, with the different caliber of people in civil and military organization. And today my topic is to discuss about the, my experiences and share my thoughts about the organizational leadership. First thing comes first. I think, do we need leaders or a leadership is required? And today I want to say that in every field, there is a leadership required at every level, whether at very directional level or at a lower level also. Uh, can you imagine a school without a principal, a college without principal, or a football team, or a basketball team without a coach? That's why any business organization, if you say, if a manufacturing firm, you require a general manager at the top level for any organization to head, you require a head. Apart from that, the, there are very functional organizations also down below. So be it politics, be it military, be in business, be in a sports field, be in any other field, leaders are required. And why it is important? Then mind comes ki other leaders can be trained or it is just an intrinsic quality. With that, it is my experience is certain qualities, what we call it leadership traits, a leader must possess. And first of his, he should be dependable. But when we say dependable, it means that he, depend, he can be dependent upon to produce any solution, what it comes any problem, or he will be able to give some solution to it. So he is dependable. Then second important thing is decisiveness. When you become a leader, it is incumbent that it is perforce your duty is to give decisions. And the decision should be based on logic. It should not be say it comes to your mind and you give a decision. Third important thing, you should have a drive and determination to do anything whatever the assigned job is there. Fourth most important is also your adaptability. You should be adaptable, flexible enough to work in any situation because when you work in a complex environment, the situation like a, in a business, uh, there are many socio, political, economic, leadership and the factors they affect your business. So that you have to understand and you have to change accordingly your business plan accordingly. In, in armed forces, if when you are in operation, every day something changes and it changes and you have to adapt to the changing environment. So adaptability is very important. Two most important other things are you should be loyal. The loyalty is a very important thing. Loyalty to your organization, loyalty to your superiors and loyalty to your juniors also which generally we forget about it. Next is, you should have a integrity. What is good, what is, what is right, what is wrong. And you should do only the right thing. It doesn't mean that you have a loyalty. It doesn't mean that you will always obey everything what is not correct and you are do it. Next important, thing which I feel generally one should have is communication. Both his verbal and written communication is important. 
Another thing which I attach a lot of importance, after all we are human beings, a person or a leader must be compassionate, he should be sensitive and he should have empathy to his people. So that is what emotional leadership, what we are talking about today. So it should be real. And second thing, I think, uh, I just want to say ki how the leaders become successful. You know, there is no opposite of good leader as a bad leader. There is no bad leader. Leaders are leaders. So there is no good leader, there is no bad leader. It is the circumstances which make them successful and there are certain things which are required. First of all, a leader must set his goal and objective what is to be achieved. And apart from that, if it is there, they should have a necessary person who can essentially do that job. Third important thing is, he should be empowered to do that job. Whatever is required, like a, suppose a university is there, a, a teacher or a professor, he is supposed to do a job. But we must, it is the duty of the organization to give him that empowerment where he can do his job. So anywhere, if you don't give a, a soldier fights and you don't give him his arms, or a leader, a leader who is leading in a company commander in the battle, if he doesn't have necessary arms, so even an ammunition, he will not be able to do the assigned task. So empowerment is also essential part. So a leader out of blue, they cannot do a task which is easy. I also say there are many leaders, it's not military leaders. I mean, we have generally concentrated one year who all are the successful leaders. If you take of Nelson Mandela, who has fought for almost, almost 50 years to get the apartheid from South Africa out. And in that 50 years, he has 25 years he has spent jail. So that type of leader, these leaders are called transformational leaders. You take an example Ram Mohan Rai, who as everybody knows in India, Ram Mohan Rai, who is a pioneer and who has taken up the job to remove Sati Pratha from the Indian society. So they have here transformed the society. You look at Vivekanand, who has become a religious leader international when he was speaking at Chicago, and most of us we know, and he spoke about religion. Hindu religion. The religion doesn't, you know, differentiate ki this religion is good or this religion is bad. Religion has got some common qualities, attributes it gives to everyone. So what I wanted to say ki leadership is essential at every level. Maybe he, the people are five people are under him, or a thousand people, or a lakh people, and a country leader who has got a crowds of people or millions of people are under him. It can be a platoon commander who has got a thirty people, an army of fifteen lakhs, twenty lakhs, forty lakhs who fights and they give their life. So uh, leadership is something intrinsic quality. It's all life. And that's what Eisenhower once has told me, somebody has asked, you know, Eisenhower, everybody knows, he has led the Allied against the Axis powers in Second World War. And he says, somebody has asked you, who is a leader? Leader is a person, whatever he wants to do, a follower or his people under him execute it because he executed it because he wants to do it. It has got two main issues. First of all, he is motivated to do a job what a leader wants it. So motivation, he, you know, just his presence and his direction is essential to prop up and to do a task. He, he motivates the people. So motivation is another aspect which a leader has to get. We call it team leader. In you know, consultancy, when I was there, it was called team leader. Because he is leading the team from the diverse area. So he becomes a team leader. He, whatever the corners are there, he strengthens it and he 
finds a solution to a given problem. Most of us, we are at what level we are talking about, our transactional leader. Transactional means at a lower level, they are thinking, what he expects, there are two things he uses. First of all, he gives a clear-cut responsibility and he expectations what he wants to achieve. Then, he also has a power in to punish and reward. Means give an incentive and to reward. And also, whatever is required, if he requires removal, he removes it. Also, throughout, he coaches. He coaches in how to achieve it. And last time, what I was saying, leader always says what to do, and the manager says how to do it. So, there is a vast difference what task will you do and what you will not do on what task you will not compromise. So I think that qualities, if it is there, and I, I, it is my experience that throughout, whether you are in any area, whether I have served in armed forces, I have served in consultancy, I have gone in a construction company, I have done in a teaching area, it is always leaders are required to make a change and then only it can be a good leader. Uh, today we say Churchill was a good leader or, or a, so Lord Bhadu Swasti was a 65, he just taken the nation. Mao Zedong was also, Lenin was there. I mean, there are many uh, people who we can depend upon. Yes, they were the leaders. I wanted to conclude since I am talking about organizational leadership. Action, it is a once, then you follow that and then you have leaders. One of the important jobs is also, I told already earlier, uh, you know, opposite to good leader is not a bad leader. All our leaders are leaders. Uh, the circumstances which also. Many times circumstances, a bad uh, time, like a coronavirus, you have seen how the people have come up. The leadership has other medical authorities or medical doctors who have come up uh, without caring for their life. And they have come up and they have met that time. So the danger, emergency and requirement also it throws up leaders. So in a testing time generally most of the leaders, so called leaders fail and many few succeed and some who were never thought it comes up. The last thing, uh, for a tap management leaders it is essential that they have to identify leaders. Who all are there? Who have got that quality? Who have, the, have drive determination? Who have got a moral courage? Who have got a emotion, emotional balance? Who can take this organization up to, uh, to meet the vision? Thank you very much.